This will be the last question before we end the session. My name is Omar. I'm from Manchester, England, and I am a business owner. I hope you are doing well. Yes, Alhamdulillah. May, all, may Allah reward you for all your efforts. My question is, when will we see Dr. Zakir Naik in the UK or Europe or in the Western world? It is such a shame that the Ummah in this part of the world is missing out on seeing Dr. Zakir Naik live in person. We have many amazing sheikhs and dais coming from all over the world. Recently, I was at an event with Mufti Menk and Omar Suleiman and they sold over 10,000 tickets for one show. It was the biggest gathering we have seen here in UK for an Islamic event. I believe if Dr. Zakir Naik came, we can sell out stadiums of 50,000 plus. Is there any update on whether you, we will see you live in UK or the Western world? Jazakallah khair. As far as me coming and giving a live lecture in UK or the Western world, it, Allah Alam. I remember last that I was there in UK was in 2009. And I remember that the largest gathering addressed in UK was in 2005 or 2006, I'm not sure. It was the GPU. It was a conference held in the Excel, Excel conference in London, UK. And mashallah, there was a gathering, for, it was a two-day conference. And there was a gathering of 25,000 people at one time. So that is the largest gathering that I am aware of in UK. You are aware of a gathering of 10,000, mashallah. But the gathering that I attended in, in uh, 2005 in London, UK, and I remember that they had charged, there were many speakers. I was the main speaker in the ending. And they said, if you want to sit next to Dr. Zakir you have to pay 200 pounds. I remember that. I'm personally against, against uh, taking fees for, for entry. And there's a policy of mine that only the first couple of years of my dawah, maybe in the 90s, the late 90s and starting of 2000, and after that, I made it a policy that when I give a lecture, you cannot charge any money. But during conferences, I could not insist because, you know, conferences, there are many speakers coming. So I remember I've been to conference in UK, that is this GPU, and in Canada a couple of times to the risk conference. And the last I remember was the journey of faith, again in Toronto. Except for these three or four conferences, after that, I made it a policy, even in conferences, if you charge money, I'll not come. So Alhamdulillah, I believe that the dawah should be done free. You can take sponsorship from the Muslim Ummah, but I don't agree with charging money for hearing lectures. Imagine if the Sabas would have charged money, then would we have got the message? Of course, no. We don't have got the message. Now coming to your question, that when will you see me back in UK live? To tell you frankly, I've been to UK several times, maybe more than 10 times. And I don't think so that I urge to come back to UK again. But if given the opportunity, I wouldn't mind going. But not that I'm longing to go. I've been there several times. And now it's easy. We can come through the media, through the satellite. And even today, there may be hundreds and thousands of people in UK who are watching the session live. But naturally the reach on the media is much larger. We have a satellite channel Peace TV which is yet being broadcast in different parts of the world. Besides the Peace TV you have the Facebook, you have the Instagram, you have the YouTube and millions of people watch. Though the percentage of people watching in Bangladesh, India, Pakistan is much more but because the volume is large there are even in the Western world, there are millions of followers of my Facebook in, only in the Western world, Alhamdulillah. And out of that, surely thousands may be watching these live programs that we have. So as far as the message reaching, yes, it is reaching. But I do agree with you, live is something else. The feeling of live is something else. What I really miss is our conferences in, in Bombay. Our conference in Bombay, the peace conference, mashallah, the audience at one time used to be in hundreds of thousands. And last day for my speech, 
about 250,000 people. So that is something which is phenomenal. Mashallah, 10 times more than the largest gathering that was there in, in, in UK, London. And when we give individual lectures, the gathering is larger. I remember the largest was in Kishan Ganj, where, mashallah, more than a million people live. So we miss those events. As far as large gathering is concerned, in the Western world, the gathering is not that big. 25,000 is... So what we really miss is the large gatherings. Yes, before COVID, the lecture that I gave in, in Indonesia was, mashallah, more than 100,000 people in Jakarta. I'd given in Klantan in 2019. There are also more than 100,000 people. Not as large as India. What's happening in India, of course, that thing can take place maybe in Bangladesh or Pakistan. There we can have millions of people. But even having 100,000 people in, in Malaysia was great. So inshallah, now that the COVID is, is over, and now the things are opening up, so inshallah, we expect that we'll be having the talks in larger gathering. Regarding me coming to the Western world, after the onslaught of the Indian government and the allegation laid by the Prime Minister of my country, India, Narendra Modi, first he led the allegation that I'm a terrorist, he had no proof, so he changed it to a hate speech. He could not prove it, he changed to money laundering. <coughs> so now, even money laundering has been rejected. Three times he asked me from the Interpol and they rejected. And mashallah, so all these allegations now have fizzled down. But yet, India is a powerful country. So after 2017, when Indian government started asking me from different countries, I have a policy that I only accept invitation if I am invited by the head of state, head of the country or maybe a home minister or from the official government channel. I have stopped accepting invitation from individual organizations. Unless they don't get me a letter from the head of state, I don't travel. And of course, after the 17, after 2017, I've been traveling mainly to Muslim countries. And yes, I did receive invitation from several non-Muslim countries. But the closest that I accepted it was in 2020 when I got an invitation from Canada. When one of the Muslim MPs in Toronto, he invited me and said that Justin Trudeau was going to be the chief guest and he wanted me also to be one of the chief guest and it was supposed to be organized in April 2020 and because it was from the government side and from Justin Trudeau I had accepted the invitation but unfortunately COVID-19 came and most of the countries in the world started being blocked from March onwards so by the time April came the date that we were supposed to have the conference it got cancelled and that was the last that of course I received invitation from many non-Muslim countries but even there was, a, there was a country I won't name it that gave me invitation from the head of state from the president but my advisors told me it's not safe to go there even though I won invitation from the head of state please don't go because they may be close to India so I had to politely refuse but normally, if I accept an invitation, it should be from the head of state. And I doubt the UK head of state will invite me. The problem I have is not with non-Muslims. Majority of the non-Muslims that watch my programs, more than 75%, they are my fans. The problem of mine is with the non-Muslim politicians. Whether it be in UK, where I started, whether it be India, whether it be Malaysia. The non-Muslim politician, because of their vote bank, you remember when the government changed in UK, previously the Labour Party was ruling, the Conservative came, Theresa May did not know me. She only asked, who is the most popular Muslim speaker who comes to UK, Zakir Naik, Bandit. So I was supposed to go in 2010. Wembley Arena was booked and many of the stadiums were booked. Just a week before I came, they excluded me that I'm not allowed to enter. These are politics. Same thing in India. The problem I have with the politician because of the vote bank, they lay allegations against me. And I have the problem even in Malaysia. The non-Muslim politicians, you know, for the vote bank, 
they keep on accusing me. So I filed a defamation case against five politicians, mashallah. Five politicians. That was in 2019 after my speech in Klantan. And mashallah, out of which one politician before the case started, he asked for a couple of judges and asked for a settlement and we agreed. The two of them, mashallah, they lost the case and they were asked by the judge that they should apologize and two are yet pending. So by Allah's grace, alhamdulillah, but this is common for the World Bank. But generally, the non-Muslims who watch my video cassette, they are my fans. Whether it be in Malaysia, I get, very often when I go to Malaysia, many non-Muslims want to take photographs with me, the Hindus, the Christians, many of the Chinese, it's common. The problem that I have is mainly with the non-Muslim politicians for the World Bank. So if Allah wills and if there is a change, inshallah, Allah knows best when is the right time. Otherwise, surely we will come via the satellite, we will come via the social media, we will come via the internet. The work will continue and the message will keep on reaching as the beloved Prophet said, inshallah Islam will enter every home. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make me and peace team instrumental in fulfilling of this hadith. This was the last question that we could answer till we meet again two weeks afterwards. Today is the, is the 19th. Till we, till we meet again after two weeks, that's the 2nd of September, because next Saturday, being the fourth Saturday, they will not be asked Sheikh Farik, because my son Farik is traveling to Indonesia for a lecture tour. He'll be there for about two weeks. So because of that, he will not be taking the session that is next Saturday. But after that, inshallah, the first Saturday of September, on 2nd of September, we'll meet again. Till then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa akhiru dawan, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen.